So listen up. We're going to have this announcement. Then we're going to take questions. Then we're going to take a trip over to the DA's office to deliver some resolutions, which we'll talk about here a little bit later. But what I want us to do is start with Cornell and Carl. And the reason we're here today is because last fall, Cornell West and Carl Dix issued a call for a campaign of mass civil disobedience to stop, stop and frisk. Over 80 people were arrested last fall protesting against stop and frisk. The reason stop and frisk has become such a major issue in this city, the reason thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of people are speaking out to stop, stop and frisk is because of what Cornell West and Carl Dix did last fall, issuing this call for mass civil disobedience. So at this point, I want to introduce Carl Dix, a member of the Revolutionary Communist Party and a founder of this group, the Stop Mass Incarceration Network. Okay, I'm Carl Dix. Thursday, September 13th, we're going to blow the whistle on stop and frisk. That's right. We're going to do that because stop and frisk is no damn good. It's racist. It's illegitimate. It must be stopped. And we are going to act to stop that. To stop it. By blowing the whistle on it on, stop, on September 13th. And everybody in the sound of my voice should join in doing that. What's September 13th going to look like? It's going to be thousands and thousands of people all across New York City blowing the whistle. Students on the way to school before they go through the metal detectors, blow the whistle. Coming out of school when the cops try to herd them like cattle and tell them they can't stop and talk to their friends, blow the whistle. In neighborhoods where cops are swarming on people 24-7, we're going to be blowing the whistle. People who are hate the way that Muslims are being targeted for racist and religious profiling, blow the whistle. People who hate the way that immigrants are being targeted and treated like less than human beings. Blow the whistle. It's going to be thousands and thousands of people across New York City and thousands more acting in solidarity. When these whistles blow, people are going to turn their heads. Windows are going to open. People are going to come out of their houses. They're going to ask what's up. And people are going to tell them we're doing this because we refuse to suffer any longer in silence the abuse from the police and the whole criminal injustice system. And then coming off of September 13th, there's going to be a whole different level of resistance. People are going to stop suffering all this in silence. Stop accepting it that way. On October 22nd, the National Day of Protest to Stop Police Brutality, people are going to be out at the prisons calling out the slow genocide that comes down on black people. So look. If you're tired of suffering this kind of harassment just because of the color of your skin, join us to blow the whistle on Stop and Frisk on September 13th. If you hate the way that people are being denied their rights just because of the color of their skin, blow the whistle. We are not aiming to mend Stop and Frisk or to lower its abuses. We are aiming to end it because it's no damn good, because stop and frisk, don't stop the crime, stop and frisk is the crime. And if you've got an ounce of concern for humanity being enforced to deal with injustice, you should blow the whistle with us. Thank you, and I want to introduce my dear brother. I ain't got to say no more than that, he's Cornell West. <laughs> It's always a joy to stand next to my dear brother Carl Dix. Nine months ago, he and I called for a mass movement to end stop and frisk because it is wrong, it's immoral, it's racist and unconstitutional. And because we wanted to take a stand publicly to go to jail, to have a trial, to have a verdict in the name of what? In the name of justice, yes. in the name of fairness, yes. that each life is precious. I don't care what color. I don't care what culture, and when it comes to the weak and vulnerable, especially our precious young people, 
who are disproportionately targeted and black and brown young people disproportionately targeted we will take a stand and many wondered would we come back after the verdict would we come back after the guilty verdict we're back again and we're stronger than ever and we've got folk who went to jail who are standing here not just beside Carl Dix and myself but outside as well give them a hand give them a hand come on y'all struggle is going to intensify because we want to end it, we don't want to mend it, and because we want to connect it to larger issues. We want to connect it to the military industrial complex. We want to connect it to the Wall Street oligarchy complex with so much greed is running amok. We want to connect it to the prison industrial complex with too much unfairness is at work. We want to connect it to this election where you see the farce between one oligarchic party and another. That's what, in part, this recall, as it were, is all about to intensify our commitment. And on September the 13th, we will be at it again. Now, I want to introduce. A young revolutionary brother, Noche Diaz, who's right now facing four, I repeat, four trials, 11 charges, for what? He's facing all these charges for standing with the people against stop and frisk, for standing with the people, with the police were brutalizing and beating them, for being on the scene to call out this racist, illegitimate, illegal stop and frisk. I introduce Noche Diaz. All right, Noche. Brother Noche. All right. Noche. Thank you all for coming. I want to thank Cornell West and Carl Dix for getting us all into some trouble back in October. Um, some of you out there have never been stopped and frisked. And maybe you don't know what it actually means to be a young person coming up in New York City or maybe you Maybe you know some people and you've heard these stories, but people need to actually know what happens every day, 1,900 times or more. Maybe you're coming home from school. Maybe you're going to school. Maybe you're going to work or coming home. You're minding your own business, you're going about your day, and suddenly some cop steps to you. They grab you, they throw you up against the wall, they turn out your pockets, and if you speak back, you risk being thrown in jail and spending the whole night locked up and facing charges in a case, maybe having to miss school or maybe having to miss work, which you can't afford to do. And your whole, your whole life begins to be dominated by the fact that at any moment when you walk the streets, some cop can step to you and mess up your whole day, your whole week, and the rest of your life. More than this, why is it that I have to look at these 15-year-olds in the playgrounds in the Bronx who tell me that if you're not a white person in this world, you don't matter and you don't mean anything. Why do I have to talk to a 16-year-old who for a year had to walk around with a restraining order to keep the cops off his back? Because by the time he's 15, he's been stopped and harassed so many times, he can't leave his house without his mother fearing for his life. And he has to go to a court and, a, and have a judge issue an order to keep these cops off his back. And now that he's 16, he no longer has his piece of paper and he's afraid to walk out and hang out with his friends. What kind of society is this? What kind of world are these youth yeah, growing up in? Yeah. How come you never hear that story every time they talk about these youth who devalue themselves and carry out violence against each other that the mayor loves to point to after the fact when he knows and he lies anyway and he, he knows his stop and frisk policy does nothing to stop these and he cares nothing about these youth and these lives that are lost and these generations mm -hmm. who are condemned to early death or life of, of brutality and imprisonment. Hell it, brother. On October 13th, that is not going to go down anymore where people are isolated, where people feel like this is just happening to them and that something's wrong with them for being stepped to, for being harassed, for being dehumanized, for having their basic rights taken from them and violated. No more in silence and no more at all. September 13th, we're elevating the level of resistance to actually put another nail in this coffin of stop and frisk like, like my brothers Cornell West and Carl Dix have been saying. We don't want to mend it, we want to end it. 
like Carl Dixon said over and over again, we don't want extra, uh, Freedom Riders didn't want extra seats on the back of the bus. They wanted an end to the Jim Crow segregation, and we want an end to the new Jim Crow of mass incarceration. Now I'm, like people have said, I'm facing trials all over the city. Facing, uh, in, in, in September 5th, I'm on trial in Manhattan, facing up to four years in prison. Precisely because when this thing goes, when these kinds of things go down, I don't walk by and I don't let it happen in silence. I don't let people get violated without someone speaking up for them. I've been standing with these youth for, for years and I've been targeted for my role in doing that. But what's important for you to know is not just that I'm a bad motherfucker who's not afraid to do some time, but that you can actually be part of beating back these attacks on people who stand, for the, stand up for the people and for the youth. And, and so I want to invite everybody to join us on September 13th. Join me in court on September 5th. Stop, stop, and frisk. I'm out. Woo! Now, before we move to the last speaker, we have to make a point here. Now, you'll notice we have some crime scene tape. And there's a reason we have crime scene tape. Why? Because what's going on here is a crime. This is where Stop and Frisk is headquartered. This is where the orders go out to stop and frisk almost 700,000 people last year. Overwhelmingly black and Latino. Overwhelmingly youth. 85% black and Latino. Nine, over 90% of the time people not even given a violation. That is a crime. Everything that Noche described is a crime. And this is where it's being led, right here. So this is why we have this crime scene tape. Now the last speaker we want to introduce is a professor of sociology at John Jay College, Professor Jim Bretos. Also, one of the new freedom fighters who got popped up in Harlem back on October 21st. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah, well, Jim. Clap it up. I'm Jim Vretos. I'm a sociologist, academic at John Jay College, and my students educated me about stop and frisk. In a typical introductory class, perhaps 30, 40 percent of the students, my students, had been stopped and frisked. I also had police officers in those classes, or would-be police officers, and they also complained about it. So this is a system that's affecting and abusing all of us, everyone who is involved and needs to change, it needs to be removed and destroyed. We are having an event at John Jay on September 6th, you're all invited, in the new building, 59th and 10th Avenue, Lecture Hall L63. We're going to have a debate, dialogue on Stop and Frisk. We're going to get the academics involved, the university world, the public intellectuals. It goes beyond the ideas, the theories, the research. This is human issues. These are moral issues. These are spiritual issues. These are ethical issues. And the academics need to know that they're part of a system that has corrupted us all. And we need to see the linkages, as Brother Cornell has pointed out, between this policy and our military policy. Mass incarceration, racism, the materialism of our society. So I welcome you all. Please come September 6th from 7 to 10. The new building, John Jay College, room L63. We'll see you there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Now, very shortly, we're going to go walking, marching over to the DA's office to deliver some resolutions, which we'll talk about. Pero antes de salir, quiero decir a todos aquí que estamos aquí para anunciar que el 13 de septiembre vamos a lanzar pedidos contra a registrar y parar. ¿Por qué? Porque el parar y registrar es algo ilegal. muy racista, ilegal, ilegal. y ilegítimo. Y estamos aquí para parar todo y lanzar este movimiento para parar. So, before we take off, we have one more speaker. Oh, hi, hi, thank you very much. My name is Nellie Hester Bailey and I have I am a part of this Stop, Stop, and Frisk national campaign 
and nowhere is it more important than here in New York City because we know that communities of color suffer the most stop and frisk. And we have recently learned through recent decisions of the appellate court that the constitutionality of challenging stop and frisk is very, very much within the higher up discussions here in New York City. It's not good for business. Mayor Bloomberg should know that. It's not good for business any more than police officer shooting 17 rounds at a suspect and within handshaking distance of that officer. Nor is it acceptable, as we learned from the New York Times, that two-thirds out of the time when the police officer discharged their firearms, they miss. And the implications of stop and frisk is way beyond the, uh, even though it is important, but there are other issues that are involved as well. This campaign is gaining steam here locally, nationally. We are not going to stop. No way. This campaign will continue until we no longer have stop and frisk. And that is from the mothers, the grandmothers, yes. the families, the husbands yes. and the wives yes. and everyone, yes. the community, yes. the church, yes. the religious yes. institutions, right. civic right. leaders. Right. Tell it, tell and it, it will continue. We must stop this illegal practice. And we have a message for you, Mayor Bloomberg. This may be your last term, but your legacy of this illegality will hunt you and the legacy of your mayoralship in this great city and its discriminatory impact against people of color. We are here to stay yep. and we are here to fight right. this illegal practice. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So I have a confession to make. I lied. We have one more speaker. Brother Mark is here, community advocate, has some things he wants to share with you. He's also, from the beginning, been part of the Stop Mass Incarceration Network, just to be clear. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. It's a pleasure being here, even though my face might be a little swollen, due to an incident yesterday where I was harmed by a landlord who literally beat up his tenant and trashed the apartment. Unfortunately, he'd be, he be in jail soon. Where were the police then? Um, I don't know where the police was, but, but when we called 911, it took them over over 30 to 45 minutes before they got there. And the suspect was able to run up, jump in his vehicle and, and get away. They claimed they were looking for him. But anyway, um, we don't want to be despair about the legality of this thing called stop and frisk. I would say to you, I've been researching this over and over. And I don't know if anyone of you know that the Supreme Court did rule that your inalienable right cannot and should not be violated. That's right. It's against the law. That's right. For anyone to stop anyone that's doing absolutely nothing. There's no justification for the NYPD to break the law. They have to have balls and stand up to their bosses, the mayor especially, and say that, look, this thing is wrong, it's illegal, and we're not going to do it until we start pulling them themselves in court for violating the law, then they would understand that, yes, this thing is illegal. An have a right to travel is part of the 14th Amendment. And no one should be going through this nonsense. The, no one. the district attorneys, the federal courts, should stop allowing this illegal practice to continue in this state and any state, racial profiling should not continue. Blacks and Hispanics have suffered for too long. 
And I just want to say that we're going to stand up. That's right. That's right. Until That's right. this illegal practice comes to an end. Yes. There's no justification for it. We have crime in our communities, but guess what? That do doesn't mean that the police have to break the break the law that's right and violate the rights of anyone that's right so with that I just want to say thank you all for coming out thank you all for standing up and we're gonna continue what we're doing let the mayor know that we're not gonna take this anymore we're gonna do whatever we can to put an end to this injustice so before we leave, we want to open things up to the press. Do you have any questions for any of the speakers today who've spoken? Any questions? Speak now. They asked it before. <laughs> okay. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go deliver a resolution that's been signed by over 980 individuals as well as a number of organizations. And we're delivering a letter to Cyrus Vance, the District Attorney of New York County. And it says, Dear Mr. Vance, we are registering our protest of the prosecution of the stop and frisk defendants by submitting this resolution. Drop the charges on the stop and frisk protesters Immediately in stop and frisk, the resolution states in part, Now, therefore be it resolved that we call on the district attorneys of Queens and Kings County to drop prosecution of those arrested protesting stop and frisk on November 11, 2011 at the 73rd Precinct in Brownsville. Right, right, right. And November 19, 2011, the 103rd Precinct in Jamaica, Queens. We call on the District Attorney of New York and Bronx Counties to drop the prejudicial prosecution of Noche Diaz. Further resolved, we call for an immediate end to the NYPD's stop and frisk policy. This resolution has been signed by Holy Ghost Upper Room Filling Station Ministry, <laughs> Freedom Socialist Party, National Action Network, Peers Group, Bureaucracy, Radical Women, Unity Fellowship of Christ Church NYC, right. the Ursuline Sisters of Tildock for Justice and Peace, Veterans for Peace New York Chapter 34, World Can't Wait, and of course, the Stop Mass Incarceration Network, as well as signed by 900 other individuals. This is what we're going to be delivering to District Attorney Sirens Vance office as we, when we leave here. 900 copies of this resolution that have been signed. So let's form up. Let's put this in the front. Carlos. Yes, please. We'll get this. Hang on. Would you hang on to that? You're in charge of it. Okay. Our people need buttons or whistles. Buttons or whistles are here. Buttons and whistles. What are we going to do September 13th? Blow up the 